Hey guys, Seaweed from Tribal Soup Project here. Welcome to another episode of Simsational. You're watching the very first installment of the Ultimate Builder's Guide, and we are going to kick this series off with five very important tips that you should be keeping in mind before you begin to build. So my very first suggestion for you guys is actually a really important suggestion, and that's to understand how to use the tools before beginning to build. Now, if you are completely new to building, you really just want to take a minute to kind of acquaint yourself with how the tools work and see how they feel when you're using them. Um, I really suggest doing like a little trial test run whose sole purpose is just kind of feeling things out. See how the tools work and how they feel when you're using them they're actually super easy to use even if you're like the newest beginner but because there seems like there's just a lot of buttons it can be a bit overwhelming at first glance so yeah with that said i do highly suggest simply going into build mode and clicking on each button systematically one at a time to see what each of them do and how they work even if you've watched like every tutorial under the sun, just take a moment to test things out and see how they work. Doing this is really going to save you a lot of frustration at the end of the day when you do begin that first build. My second suggestion is actually a tip that has two parts. The first part is that you want to have a clear vision of what you want your lock to look like when it's finished. If you do this, you're going to make for a significantly easier build. And luckily for us, there is an unlimited source of inspiration right at our very fingertips. And of course, that is Google. Um, when I first started building, I usually just run an image search looking for mansions or things of that nature. But the thing about doing it that way is you're usually only going to get one picture of that mansion. But if you actually look for houses for sale, you're going to have several different pictures of whatever structure it is you're going to build. And a lot of times that'll even include a floor plan of the structure as well, which really, really makes planning that build much easier. So now with that said, the second part of my tip is to kind of plan out how you think you're going to want to proceed with the build. Now, obviously, if you're a beginner, you're not going to be super familiar with all the tools, but you should still have a kind of general idea in your mind about how you think you'll want to proceed. For example, there are several different ways to create the walls of the structure, and it'll be easier if you know whether you're going to be more comfortable just dropping blocks to create rooms, or if you'll want to use the freehand hand drawing tool, etc. So yeah, with just a little bit of planning, you'll ensure that the build goes totally smoothly and make for a lot less frustrating day. So if you're a beginner builder, then you're probably asking yourself about now, what exactly do I mean when I say that there are ways of doing things which are not traditionally available in the game? And to answer that question, I am here to tell you that it's totally okay to use cheats. Using building cheats does not in any way mean that you're really cheating in the game. It simply more means that you can really appreciate an aesthetically pleasing lot. As an example of this, I have created this glorious natural pool with a beautiful waterfall, something which I would not have been able to create if it were not for using building sheets to place the plants where I want them and to make the water flow from the rocks. All right, so tip number four may seem really kind of weird, especially the part about knowing which front door you want to use before starting a build, 
But I am super serious when I say that there have been a few times that I didn't do this at the beginning of a build, and it totally messed me up. I had to take walls down and put them back up because everything was extremely off-center because I didn't know which door that I wanted to use. And then I picked out the perfect door, and it's the wrong size, so I have to redo everything. So now this is the part of the discussion where if my husband were here, he'd be saying, my wife has OCD, and while that may very well be true, it is my firm belief that even if you don't have OCD, you will find this tip extremely important. And to show you why, we're going to real quick pretend that we want to build a colonial house. Now, one of the defining factors of a house being colonial is that the front door is in the center, and you have windows evenly placed on either side and then above the door as well. So now, here's the part where I tell you that not all doors are created equal. Some doors are only one wall space. Other doors are two wall spaces. And other doors are three wall spaces. So let's say I wanted to use this door here that has three wall spaces. And now I need to place my windows. So I'm going to place windows here and here and here and here. And then I will have one up here and evenly above these ones here. Now, can you see what's wrong with this? Because I didn't know that the door I wanted was three wall spaces, this structure is drawn off. This structure would actually need to be like this. And a lot of times when you're building a structure, you're not first going to place your doors and windows. You're going to build your structure up. You're going to put your roofs on. You're going to put your deck on and things like that. And by the time you go to start placing your doors and windows, everything is off center and you have to completely redo stuff. So yeah, it's really important to actually know what front door you want to use before starting to build. Now for my final suggestion, this can actually be carried over into just about anything you do in life. And that's to not get too overwhelmed or to think that it's going to take you just too long to learn how to build. Now I know that when I went to build my very first house in The Sims 2, um, I became really overwhelmed when I realized that I was going to have to draw all these doors and place all these wall tiles and floor tiles. And it just was very overwhelming to me. And I almost didn't even attempt it. But the honest truth of the matter is, is that once you understand how to use all the tools, it's so much simpler than you think. Just take a deep breath and give yourself some time to learn. Do a little bit at a time. The more builds you do, the better you'll get, and in no time, you'll be having these amazing sim worlds, which are completely compromised, which are completely, com oh my God, I cannot t t talk today. You will have completely customized lots for your own game enjoyment. And with all that said, I really do hope that you guys found these tips useful. Feel free to post any questions you may have or suggestions or tips of your own down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And be sure to do look for the next installment of the Ultimate Builder's Guide. We're going to be going over the bare basics of building and go over what each of the tools do and how they work. So yeah. I hope that you guys enjoyed this and learned something from watching it. Please do give us a nice little thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Um, do, do not forget to subscribe to the channel because that will really help us out. Check out our website. See some of the other cool stuff we got going on out there. And until next time, guys, happy simming and I'll catch you all later.
Bye.